Hanukkah is what? <laughs> right? No matter how many times, right? We just asked yes. the question. Well, the, just a, a quick, I guess, a disc first of all, the story of Hanukkah in about one sentence. And I think I said it here last time, so I won't repeat yeah. that joke. But um, they, the, the um, Assyrian Greeks who then ruled um, Jerusalem at the time, uh, banned religious Jewish religious practice, um, and many Jews actually, you know, changed their religious or, or religion or or just abandoned their practices. Um, but a small core of Jews kept it going, and it became a fight. And the Jew, the Jews won. And today we celebrate with uh, oily foods because part of the miracle was that though they had defiled much of the oil that needed to be used yeah. to light the menorah in the temple, there was one left, and that one lasted for seven, for eight days and nights. And so it became, you know, the miracle. There is the uh, there is the menorah, and that's well. the menorah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so and uh, and the tradition is in a in a Jewish family. Uh, you would light the candles each night. Is that how it's uh, correct? You light yep. the, there's, yeah. The custom today is that we light um, one candle and then the, the first night and add every day, every succeeding day. You um, you add one one more. Uh, but I just want to say that it is traditionally in at least Jewish theory in Jewish thought, it is meant to be a very public holiday. And many people think that today because. Uh, especially in American culture, but also Australian culture where I grew up, um, this time of year is full of non-Jewish holidays. Yeah, yeah. And so the Jewish kids sort of get really upset. So now we've made, as Adam Sandler says, instead of one day of presents, we have eight crazy nights, eight right? Eight crazy nights, yeah. But it became, <laughs> but there's more. Nights. The truth is that really Hanukkah is, a, is meant to be a very public display and celebration, um, but just for the past... Um, thousand or so years, it's been pretty hard to do that because Jews have been um, really persecuted wherever they were. So yeah. even though the custom is to light it publicly, we've always lit it privately. But today in America, thank God, we have brought out many of those ancient customs that haven't been practiced for literally a millennium or more. Well, and it's seen this. Uh, would you want to, I understand your faith uh, if you're a Christian, but would you want to exclude those that, that don't uh, practice uh, Christianity? Right. Um, I don't know. So, what are your thoughts honest. about that big push today? I, I, I think, in a way, it's just silly because, you know, I mean, what are you trying to get people to, you know, observe your holiday? I mean, yeah, it is obviously the vast majority of Americans today um, observe. The day of Christmas and and, yeah. it's, and it's, it is their holiday and it's a it became, you know it's a national holiday, so I think that that's wonderful and it's it is nice this time of year it's very joyous and um, but yeah it, it doesn't I mean yeah I think we all have our holidays our religious observances and we should respect others and and celebrate our own yeah. and don't allow it to become but I I will say that I don't know if you know this fun fact but Christmas lights the ones that you have today mm -hmm. who invented those a Jew. A Jew. <laughs> really? There's Morris Prop in the early 1900s, and till today, his family's doing okay. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. You know, the sad thing is, he was doing it. He 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 originally did it to to light the menorah, but then you know, all of a sudden, the Christians took over, and look at what has happened. Yeah, uh, that's you know. very funny. Well, after all, a Jew did create Christmas too. So let's be yes, honest. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Uh, I, I, go ahead with yours because mine's a, a way off track. This question. is going to sound like a really stupid question and I, I could be completely off base. It wouldn't be going. Is it at different times each year? Because I feel like some years Hanukkah is closer to Christmas. It's later in the month of December. Uh, so why is that a stupid question? Okay, you well, have to tell me because, because it's not. It's a very good question. Okay, we okay. have a different calendar. Ours is the oh, lunar calendar. Oh, so I'm right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now, the Muslims use the lunar cal calendar exclusively, so they go by the lunar year, so their year is constantly moving back because um, it's less days. Ours is a very unique calendar. It's lunar, but it also follows the season, so we uh, we catch up. So it basically has to be somewhere around this time of year. It never, it's not like Ramadan, which you know can be at different times of year every year. It's always around this time of year, but it can change. And last year was like the earliest time that it could be in like a hundred and something years or more. I don't know, everyone was giving their times. Um, it was on Thanksgiving, and that was like, that would never happen again. But um, usually it's around now-ish and it can be a bit later. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually born on Hanukkah, but my secular birthday can sometimes, it can be up to four weeks apart either way. Okay. 
Um, he just had a baby. And, Congratulations. Uh, so they imme immediately had to quickly get in there and name the child. You had to name your, your child. Uh, in the Jewish faith, it's a little different, isn't it? Um, yes. For a boy, we name the child um, when he's circumcised, which is on the eighth day. Um, and for a girl, it's um, pretty much immediately, but it's done in front of a Torah, so it has to be on a day when the Torah is read in the, in the, in the synagogue, which is Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. So it has to be one of those days, and you name it at Torah. But we don't like... even it's if not you, that, that. You don't walk out of the hospital immediately and say, right. here's the name. Right. In, yeah. in fact, the custom is not to say the name until you formally sort of let God know about it first. So, Got it. So, okay. Yeah. That's Very cool. interesting. Um, and then my uh, last question is what we're watching. It's amazing how religion has been in the news. Um, and there, there's this entire situation going on with the Muslim faith. Um, with uh, and, and there was just a case where this this uh, facility they have down in, uh, in, in in southern Hudson Valley is where it is. Islamburg. Islamburg. Uh, the uh, there there was uh, an attempt at attack last night. You see the abortion clinic. Uh, it looks like that is going to be based on uh, on faith and God forbid this whole ISIS uh, thing that is going on and the Syrian refugees. What are your thoughts on all of what is happening? right now. It's a scary time it seems. It's a scary time and I, I, I'm not an international diplomat. I, I know very little but I do read the news a lot um, and there's a famous quote from Solomon which says there is nothing new under the sun. Is it amazing, right? If you read whenever I, I lament you know current international relations and all of that firstly to, under, to know today's international relations between our diplomats and our leaders and all of that just go back 20, 30, 40 years, you'll see yeah. the exact same thing. Um, but even a thousand years ago, we were fighting over the same things. People have always been a little nuts. So yeah. hopefully we can go beyond that and with enough good people. It takes a few bad people to do really bad things. But we believe that the strength of good is more powerful than the strength yeah. of bad. So sort of the lesson, the Jewish lesson from 9-11, aside from the fact that we got to win and all of that, is that if... And 11 people could do something so bad, you can imagine what 11 good people could do. Yeah.